Dr. Shirazi, a board certified dermatologist specializing in medical cosmetic dermatology and the founder of Aussie MD Skincare. And I'm here to guide you through this journey of how to pick the right exfoliating product for your type of skin and how to put it into a routine because it's truly overwhelming for the consumer with the number of products. There's just no way of knowing which one to pick and how you use it. So let's do a deep dive into exfoliation 101. But before we get started, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe and share this with a friend who may find this video valuable. After all, it's all because of your subscription that this channel continues to bring you valuable information. Well, exfoliation is actually quite tricky because it puts your skin barrier at risk. And we all know that an impaired or compromised skin barrier can definitely wreak havoc to your skin because the skin barrier keeps the bad stuff out, the good stuff in, and if there's any sort of disruption, you end up with you know, dryness, redness, peeling, your acne gets worse. For more on the skin barrier, check out my video. So the bottom line is you want to exfoliate because there are a lot of benefits, but you want to make sure you're doing it the right way. So the first question is, but why? Why do you want to exfoliate? Because our skin naturally exfoliates itself. It's not like, you know, the cells are not going through the skin layer every 28 days. So why, why further this process and enhance this process? Well, it depends on who you're asking and the skin type, because if you're 20 versus you're 50, there could be different reasons for you wanting to exfoliate. But in general, exfoliation helps with improving skin texture, smoothing the surface of the skin. It helps with unclogging pores and acne. It helps brighten the discoloration. It can help with hyperpigmentation and fine lines and wrinkles and sun damage, as well as allow other skincare products to better penetrate your skin. So they work better, they have a greater effect on your skin. It can also boost your collagen. So it can really be an important part of your anti-aging routine. So aside from all these benefits of you know tone and texture, if you're 20 and you have acne, then there's a good reason to exfoliate. Now, if you're 50 and you don't have acne, the reason to exfoliate is as we age, our skin cells become lazy. That's right, we're not renewing our skin like we used to. We get more accumulation of dead skin on the outer layer, and so it can give us a dull appearance. So if you wanna boost collagen, and you wanna brighten your complexion, then that would be the reason why you would wanna exfoliate. So you could exfoliate really at any age, but the products you choose to exfoliate with, how often you exfoliate, and what type of exfoliant may vary depending on your age, your skin concern, and you know your sensitivities, your lifestyle, all those things become a factor. So how does exfoliation work? Well, there's physical exfoliants, and I personally, I'm not a fan of those in general because I feel like they are really harsh and they're not as even and predictable as chemical exfoliants. So physical exfoliants will use different particles or um, grains and scrubs that physically remove the dead skin cells that accumulate on the outer layer. Whereas chemical exfoliants, things like you may have heard of, glycolic acid, AHA, BHAs, they dissolve the bonds that hold the skin cells together. And by doing that, they cause them to dissolve and come off of the outer skin layer. Now, there are different potencies and different types, and they all penetrate the skin into different levels. The reason I favor chemical exfoliants, not only because they are more predictable and more even, but they also send signals down into the deeper skin layers for your fibroblasts to stimulate and rev up collagen production. They can also help with discoloration and have some other benefits such as reducing inflammation and hydrating the skin. Some of them are humectants that actually hydrate the skin. For all those reasons, I favor chemical exfoliants 
over physical ones. Plus the skin on the face is more delicate, more sensitive, and you can get irritation with the physical exfoliant much more commonly than you can with the chemical ones. Uh, just because sometimes the scrubs, you know, they don't have like an even particles in them. If you do love them, they do give you faster results. So you might see smoothing, you know, happen faster. I favor them more so on the body, like elbows, knees, you know, um, areas where you get thicker skin that's a little bit more durable and less sensitive than the face. But lots of people like physical exfoliants. As long as your skin tolerates them, uh, then there's no arguing with success, right? So moving on to, well, how do you choose the right exfoliant? Well, I would say again, if you have normal or combination skin, you could get by with a physical exfoliant. There are some, you know, pretty good ones out there that are more gentle and more even. Like this one by the outset, it is an exfoliating caffeine polish. It's really fine and it doesn't have um, a lot of the uneven granules in them. So I find this to be on the more gentle side. So this is an option. Something like the St. Ives Scrubs, you know, I don't know if you guys did this, ever used it, but I you know, used it years ago when I was a teenager and you were scrubbing it. What happens when there's friction and rubbing on the skin, if you have acne, that can make it worse because friction rubbing can aggravate the inflammation. If you have rosacea, then the scrubbing can make broken capillaries and the red veins on your skin worse, which is why I really favor chemical exfoliants. So really there are three main groups of exfoliating acids, alpha hydroxy acid, beta hydroxy acid, and then polyhydroxy acid. The latter we don't hear about as much. It's sort of the overshadowed cousin of the others but it's super, super gentle, and it's one that you should know about if you've got real sensitive skin. And if you have normal to combination skin, I would say my favorite chemical exfoliant is glycolic acid. I love this acid because it just has this brightening effect to it, so if you have hyperpigmentation and you know fine lines and wrinkles, it really does a nice job of brightening as well as smoothing the surface of the skin. It also is a very small molecule, so it's able to penetrate into the skin much more effectively than the other acids. It could be a bad or a good thing. I guess if you have sensitive skin or dry skin, you may not want to go with a glycolic acid, but if you have normal combination and you are wanting to do this for anti-aging, for hyperpigmentation, it is a great start. I would suggest starting with a low percentage, like a two to 5% to start, and you can always titrate up or down. In terms of products, I love this exfoliating cleanser. It has glycolic acid and salicylic acid. Cleansers are great. It's a great way to start your exfoliation process because you're not leaving it on the skin, and I would suggest applying this to dry skin, maybe leaving it on for 30 seconds to a minute and then rinsing it off. What I love about this mousse cleanser is that it comes out already foamed, so you don't really need water. You can just apply this directly to dry skin and let it sit on there almost like a mask, but then rinse it off. You can start with 30 seconds and work your way up to a minute. Some others, uh, the Drug Elephant has a great overnight glycolic serum. It tends to be a little bit stronger, but this is a great product. And then for the body, the One Spray is one of my favorites. It has glycolic acid 10% along with salicylic acid, but it's so easy to use because you know, um, sometimes with exfoliants, like your back or your legs or even your heels, it's just much easier to spray than to, you know, lather up and, and use a bunch of product. So these are some of my favorites. I'm gonna list a bunch of products as a link below so that you guys can have a variety of options because these are just some that I just had on my little shelf here. Now, if you have dry skin, I favor lactic acid for dry skin because lactic acid is a humectant, which means it attracts and holds on to water, so it does a really nice job of hydrating the skin. It's also a lot more gentle than others like 
glycolic acid. So some examples of that or that are over the counter. Shawnee Dardan has one that's a lactic acid as well as amlactin over the counter. I know it's like a body lotion, but it's 12% lactic acid. Biosans has a great one with squalane and lactic acid, perfect for dry skin. I do really love their products. Some of them have essential oils, so if you have really sensitive skin, then you know, be cautious of that. There is a little bit of a fragrance from the essential oil in this. And of course, The Ordinary, you know, has both glycolic acid and lactic acid. They are a much more affordable option. And then if you have oily skin, salicylic acid is a great one for oily skin. I love salicylic acid because it is lipophilic, meaning it is attracted to oils. So it really does a nice job of getting deep into the pores and dissolving you know, the, the cement, the stuff that's in blackheads, for example, that stuff is so hard and so hard to, you know, get cleaned out of pores, but salicylic acid does a beautiful job of that. It's also anti-inflammatory. It is great for somebody with acne, for example. I just, I love salicylic acid. I find these Clarify pads at 2% salicylic acid to be very effective. It also has glycolic acid in it, so if you have acne and you have some discoloration or hyperpigmentation, a combination of the two does a really nice job. These come as 60 pads, which will last you, you know, a really long time. Uh, they're super easy to use. A lot of my patients use them as sort of a, a cleansing wipe in the morning. Other options, like a drugstore brand, is 2% salicylic acid acne wash by Neutrogena. Super easy to use. Again, I'll list more products down below. And then if you have sensitive skin, then the polyhydroxy acid, which is gluconolactone, this is for very, very sensitive skin. Now, if you have a little sensitive skin, mandelic acid is also a great choice. I love mandelic acid too because it is also lipophilic, similar to the salicylic acid. So if you're sensitive and oily, then mandelic acid is a great option. There are several products with that ingredient, but if you are sensitive, sensitive, like rosacea sensitive, and everything, you know, gets your skin red, then go with the gluconolactone. It is actually the overshadowed cousin to glycolic and salicylic acid, but I find that it deserves a seat at the table because it's still a very gentle exfoliant, so we, don't really hear about it as much because everybody always talks about AHAs, BHAs. Well, PHAs are great options for somebody who's sensitive. Some people don't refer to it as an active because it's so mild. It's also very hydrating. So if you've got super sensitive, sensitive skin, then that's what I would start with. And then lastly, azelaic acid. We don't typically Think about that as an exfoliant, but it is a very gentle exfoliant. Azalic 10 Serum is one of my favorites applied after cleansing. It's great for rosacea, great for acne, great for hyperpigmentation, and it's super gentle. Another common question is how often should you exfoliate? Well, me personally, I use my retinol five to six times, and then one or two nights of the week, I skip the retinol, and I use my exfoliant. Now, it really depends on the type of exfoliant you're using. If you're using a really powerful one, let's say a glycolic 5, 10, 15%, or a salicylic acid 2% that you leave on, you know, something that's more powerful, then you may want to reserve it for, you know, one or two nights a week. If you have acne and you're not on a lot of other active products, meaning retinols or vitamin C, then you may be able to get by with a daily cleanser, like the exfoliating cleanser, every day. Because cleansers in general, you're not leaving on for long periods of time. So they tend to be better tolerated for daily use as opposed to medicated pads or creams that you're leaving on, for example, overnight. So my recommendation is start with once. You don't really need to exfoliate more than a couple of times a week for anti-aging purposes. Because really, again, remember your skin exfoliates on its own. Exfoliants just kind of amplify and enhance that process. Now, I also get asked, should you exfoliate at night or in the evening. I personally like exfoliating at night because our skin renewal process peaks at midnight. And so that is the best time to boost that cellular renewal with an exfoliant. Some people prefer to exfoliate in the morning. Uh, sometimes it's just preference. It's really important to make sure 
you are not using a lot of products with exfoliating properties. So even though you might be on a glycolic acid, you know, if you're en if you're using an enzyme-based cleanser, for example, that's also exfoliating, or your retin-A has glycolic acid in it, then you're really, you know, double dipping and triple dipping, and that is really when you start to get in trouble. You start to affect your skin barrier because you're you're going into that barrier too deep by using too many products that are doing the same thing. Which brings me to what should you look out for when exfoliating? Your skin will be much more sensitive to sunlight and getting a sun reaction and sunburn when you are on exfoliants. And I don't think people realize this. I mean, I have people that say, you know, oh my gosh, I started using, you know, these pads, these exfoliating pads, and, and my skin turned red after a couple weeks. It's like, well, are you wearing sunscreen? Uh, are you, you know, protecting yourself from the sun? Because again, you're getting rid of that outer dead skin layer and really exposing your skin when you're exfoliating. So that is when you can get burned and sun damage much more quickly. So be really cautious of that. Another main issue is irritation. So if you start an exfoliant and, you know, a week or so later, everything you're putting on your skin stings or tingles, something's not right. You know, the exfoliant is getting really close into your skin barrier and causing irritation because a moisturizer should not really sting when you're putting it on unless you are overdoing it with the exfoliants. Remember, you don't necessarily need to exfoliate more than once or maximum twice a week. And sometimes even once every other week is fine. So I find that the common mistake with people is they feel like they have to exfoliate every day. You know, you, you do not need to exfoliate every day. Your skin does exfoliate on its own. So really start low, you know, lower percentages of acids, start with two, 5%, and then work your way up to higher strength as your skin tolerates it. And be cautious of using other actives along with exfoliants because remember, the exfoliant will allow your retinol to penetrate deeper and work better. And so it's gonna be more powerful. Your vitamin C is gonna be more effective. So take that into consideration too. If you're darker skin toned, remember that if the exfoliant irritates your skin, it's gonna cause hyperpigmentation, which is what you were probably hoping to treat with the exfoliant, right? Because a lot of people say, well, no, the glycolic acid makes my skin brown. It turns it, you know, it gave me hyperpigmentation. Well, you are probably overdoing it. Uh, so, you know, when people use like glycolic acid for dark underarms, you know, that skin there is very delicate. And although it's a great exfoliant, it helps with hyperpigmentation. If you overdo it or overuse it, it is gonna cause irritation and redness and stinging. And that's a good sign for irritation. And that is gonna lead to hyperpigmentation. All right guys, I hope that was helpful and that gave you an easy to follow guide on your journey to exfoliating. Comment below, let me know what questions you have. Again, I will link some products for you down below. Until next time, please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Share this with a friend. I love hearing from you and I am so appreciative of your subscription and listenership. Until next time, thanks guys. Thank you.